Hi everyone, this is Dirk. What can you expect for 100 bucks, huh? So, this is the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2. And yes, I'm actually recording this video right now with this lens. To be on the safe side, because I have no one behind the camera to operate it, I record this at f1.8, so I can move a little bit back and forth. Uh, but now, let's take a look and see if this is a usable lens. The lens comes in a very simple package. What I do appreciate is that it is factory sealed, so you are always sure that you don't get a used or refurbished copy. The lens is surprisingly heavy. And here was the first disappointment. There is a screw on lens protection, but there is no lens hood. Everything is made of metal, very solid, and I love the large glass. I mean, I'm actually a sucker for large glass. The focus ring is at the rear of the lens and the aperture ring is at the front, something I don't really like. What I like is that it looks and feels like a very expensive lens. The focus ring goes smooth with a nice resistance, but the travel distance could be a bit longer for more precise focusing. Taking a look at the sharpness, center sharpness at f1.2 is not really great, but as soon as you stop it down at f2, f2.8, you can definitely see improvements. It gets really much better at f4 and f5.6. It is at its best at f8 and it's getting softer at f16. The corner sharpness is something that's really bad and only after you stop it down to f5.6 you have actually usable results in the corners. Now as far as vignetting and distortion goes, this is a very well controlled lens and as soon as you're at f2.8 you can already ignore the vignetting and also the distortions are not really bad. A little bit of a barrel distortion but it's actually better than what you can expect for a lens of this price range. Now this video demonstrates the weak points of the lens. When it comes to tricky light situations, we can see chromatic aberrations, color fringing and ghosting. I mean, this is whining at a high level. We still can achieve very usable results and as soon as you stop it down to f2, f2.8, there is a much better control of chromatic aberrations and color fringing. I was very surprised to see the results when it came to a side-by-side -side comparison against the really great Sigma 56mm f1.4. I recorded both videos at f1.4 to be fair and I did not expect this quality from a $100 lens. Alright, enough already playing around indoors. Let's take the lens outside and see how it really performs. To get some really interesting footage for this review, I went to the mud race to take some photos and videos for you. Since I had to manually focus and I was not used to this lens, first I shot at f5.6. The more pictures I took, the more fun it became for me to work with this lens. Once I noticed that focusing was much easier than I expected it to be, I became braver and I shot at f2.8.
I missed quite a few shots because I photographed moving subjects, but the majority of my photos were super sharp. Honestly, I bought this lens only for the review. My intention was to sell it later on eBay as a used lens once I'm done with the review, but I had so much fun playing around with this lens, I'm going to keep it. Please let me know in the comments below what you think of this lens. Is this something for you? Is this something you would buy? I hope you enjoyed my video. If so, please leave a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching this and I hope to see you soon again. Bye for now.